So it's been just about a week now since I last posted the video talking about the Nine Tails event and explaining how you can participate. If you haven't seen that, it'll pop up on the screen here so you can go get yourself up to speed on what it is. Since then, I've had the opportunity to participate with my community two additional times, and I've gotten a greater feel for the non-combat part of the event, which I talked about in that initial video. Overall, my thoughts on the event haven't changed when it comes to the combat side of Ninetales. I still find the lockdown event to be really, really fun if you're playing with a big group of friends, or even on your own and there are other players about trying to blow up the Idris and other Ninetales ships. However, when it comes to the medical supply part of the mission, it's got some issues, and that's what I want to go over in this video to hopefully provide some feedback for CIG and to gather your thoughts about how the event can be improved in future iterations. Finger. The Valkyries I are big assassin. Are you uh, coming with me? So before I go into what's wrong with the Nine Tails event, I first need to go back and explain a little bit about what's behind the events themselves, because some of you may not be up to speed on what's driving them. Each time CIG runs an event, either Xenothreat or Ninetales, it's also a test of some new capabilities for the game itself. On the surface, it may be new missions they want to test, new mechanics, but underneath the hood, there's a lot more to it. As you may recall, Tony Z did a talk at the last CitizenCon, now around two years ago, talking about Quanta, which is an artificial simulation of an individual within the universe of Star Citizen, simulated at around 100,000 Quanta, which are really just like virtual NPCs, per system. These Quanta are used to simulate a living, breathing universe in the background. NPCs buying and selling, trading, pirating, virtually anything you can do in the verse and more is being simulated in this background simulation that's hooked up to the backend servers of Star Citizen. The idea behind this is to create a believable economy that the player is affected by and can in turn affect. The effects of the system materializes in what missions we get, what NPCs we run across, the type of NPC, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Quanta is also supposed to systematically affect every other system within the game. So rather than the developers having to place a certain amount of items on Orcorp that you can buy, this Quanta system will naturally determine it based on the input variables that the developers initially set up for how much Arcorp is able to produce for, say, modules, which is what its specialty is. My explanation here really only barely scratches the surface, and there's a lot more depth to the system than I've explained here. It's really worth a watch if you're interested in this type of system in gaming, so definitely go check that out. It'll be in the description of the video below. So then how does this relate to the events themselves? Well, like I said in the beginning of this part of the video, they are using the events to test certain parts of the game. And Quanta is one part that they're testing. Tony Z has played a big part, a big role, in how these events have been designed. A lot of the elements of them are being informed by Quanta, everything except for how and when the events are triggered themselves. That's going to be a later feature that they're currently still working on. Specifically, the Quanta are also seeming to affect the amount of medical supplies that are available for purchase for players to then sell to the station as part of the resupply mission for the Ninetales event. And it may even be determining how many wrecks you're able to find as an alternative to buying the medical supplies from traditional locations like ports and cities, as I outlined in that guide video I made earlier this week. However, this is where we start to see some problems with this system and how it actually affects the fun that you're able to have in the game. This may just come down to tweaking this, you know, the numbers for Quanta, but in my experience, it seems like the medical supplies are an extremely short supply through all the servers, and the servers are linked, so one station only has a finite amount of medical supplies available for purchase across all servers, and if you buy them from one server, it affects the other. So I suspect what may be happening is that because so many people are buying these medical supplies, they are in short supply pretty much all of the time because all it takes is one person to buy a full truckload of them and then no other servers have access to participating in this non-combat part of the mission. And thus we arrive at one of my first issues I've found with the event. Realism versus fun. It's very intellectually interesting that these 
quanta are affecting the medical supplies. However, in practice, it's not very fun to be locked out of a portion of the event because one person decided to buy a million of those units from all the stations that you have access to. I recall on many occasions when CNG was asked how realistic they want to make the universe of Star Citizen that they replied that they would make it realistic to the point where it's still fun, but still feels somewhat realistic. Well, in my view, the Ninetales event, at least on the trading side of it, is not fun. Sure, it might be realistic that one person with a lot of money is buying up all of the resources to sell to make the most money, getting richer, but is that a good thing? Further compounding this issue is the fact that there are some bugs in Star Citizen that hinder workarounds to this. For example, one of my org mates was able to buy a bunch of medical supplies throughout the week and save them for the event. This seemed to work great for him. He made a lot of money, however, when I did the same thing, my ship became unretrievable, and all of that cargo that I bought throughout the week was gone. You know, just wasted. And you know, just saving that stuff up doesn't mean you're going to be able to participate, because as you may have already discovered if you've tried the event yourself, the Ninetales event frequency on the weekend is pretty rare. It only happens maybe about once a day for somebody in a certain time zone. Maybe twice if you're lucky, but I've only ever seen it happen once. Further compounding issues with the event is that the startup period or the warm-up period that's meant to give you time to organize really only matters if you actually got the message for the first part of the mission. So it'll pop up and tell you that the Ninetales are about to lock down a station and you have about an hour to prepare. But if you weren't in the server at that point, you will not see any indication that you're in that waiting period. So you won't know until it starts. And at that point, you've got a very short time to get together with your friends and get out to deliver the medical supplies before it goes over to the final part of the event where you have to defend against the attacking fleet. All of this can take at most around two hours and at least maybe like an hour if people are really effective. Which leads me to my next really big issue with the event. They have an alternative, if you don't know, to going and buying stuff from major cities and selling them at the station that's being locked down. You can actually go to the Lagrange point that's been locked down by the Ninetales and search for wrecks by scanning around, which is what I've actually been doing in the background here in the video. But what you may have noticed is that it can take a really long time to find the wreck. I've sped up the searching part of these videos around 500%. In real time, what I discovered is that each time I tried to locate a wreck, it took me 10 to 20 minutes to locate one. And that really is a lot of time in an event that only lasts at most around two hours. What's worse is that you'll often find just the segments of the Starfarer wreck that don't have cargo in them. You'll find the tails or the wings, but you won't see the hull itself. That's the part that you need to get the cargo. That's because they're actually loading in much more slowly than the other parts of the ship. While well, the latest patch for 3.14.1 seems to have stabilized the servers enough not to 30k every 15 minutes, object container streaming and server tick rates still seem to be pretty rough. So I found that I needed to wait around that wreck site for about a minute for the hull to actually load in. So these issues with the servers just not loading in the wrecks fast enough may be part of why they're so hard to find. I don't know, that's something for CIG to determine. But for now, I'm going to assume that they're rare because that's what the game design seems to indicate. So then you might be thinking, well, these wrecks must be worth a lot of money then, right? Because they're so rare and difficult to find? <laughs> well, that's the next part that I've got a problem with in this event. But before I talk about this next issue, I first want to show you guys the gameplay itself because this part of the mission is pretty damn fun. Raiding a wreck is amazing and incredibly immersive, and so I'm just going to share that with you here through this whole sequence, and then I'll talk about it at the end. Alright, let's move in together. It looks like we got three people. This is, your one chance to turn. This is what happened last time. Yeah, we can't uh, operate the door. Alright, move with me. I'll take point. Going down, scratch one bogey. Great job. Moving left. Five bay clear. They noised. Give it a second for them to pop back up. All right, we have to crawl through the vents over here. All right, cover me. Flashlight on my gun is not working. Cover me while I, cover me while I crawl. Covering. Man, 
advised, I have a lock on you, uh, whoever's in the Anvil Hornet. Going through the opening. Okay. Hold on a second. I gotta end the comm on my screen. There's a weapon on this guy if anybody wants that. We got a contact around the corner. All right, move with me. Are you? He's down. Probably gonna have contacts across the the mezzanine. Yep, contact, contact across the mezzanine. All right, moving on the left side. Contacts down on the lower level. Now that went pretty smoothly, but as you may have noticed, we got attacked by the Ninetales after we entered the wreck, and this is something that happened multiple times through multiple different occasions where we found wrecks. And there are players to worry about, which is exactly what just happened. The wreck and my ship got rammed. Luckily, we had a backup ready to go, and it wasn't an issue because we didn't load anything just yet. We were still clearing the wreck. So then you can tell here, just by entering the wreck, you're going to need somebody to help cover you in a fighter that's capable of taking on multiple opponents and possibly players if they locate you while you're trying to clear the wreck out. And then you get the cargo itself to worry about. There are several boxes you're going to have to load into a ship that you're going to want to use to sell at the local station. And while you're loading it, you know, you gotta be quick, because the more time you spend, the more Ninetales are gonna show up, and the more players are potentially gonna show up to kill you. One cool side note about this mission, though, is it is using bigger boxes that we've not had before in the game for buying and selling, and that's these medical supply boxes. These are actual sellable items that you can load up into your cargo and sell for a lot more money than the standard small SCU boxes. So if you do this mission, be sure not to miss them. And that leads us to the next big problem with this event that I hope that they can improve. After you've loaded all of the cargo you're able to load up into your ship, the only person who's able to actually sell this stuff to the station and receive money for it is the owner of the ship. But then you may say, well, you can share the money now through the trader system, right? You can just share the money across everybody equally. That's the next problem. The value of this load is pretty abysmally low. Even after the delivery fee, after selling a full load of this cargo and spending around 45 minutes doing it, the total amount made was around 20,000 AUEC. But perhaps the biggest issue with this isn't the money, it's the reputation. Reputation is how you mark progress in Star Citizen. And as far as I can tell, the only way the game recognizes that you've participated in this portion of the event is by selling them yourself. If you don't sell them, you get no reputation for the event. So all these people who helped may be able to share the funds, which is pitifully low, but they won't be able to share that reputation, which is what you'll need to earn stuff in the future. So how then might these problems be resolved? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. As far as the reputation goes, either make the missions shareable so that everybody gets equal reputation for selling the goods, or automatically share the reputation across all of the party members. Automatically. And regardless of whether or not that person is in the area. Because sometimes, maybe a person gets killed and they respawn somewhere else, or maybe that person has to go to prison because they made a mistake. They should still get that reputation because it really sucks to participate and not get anything from it. The next obvious thing is to greatly increase the supply and demand of medical supplies. Economy be damned. Because right now, it's just not fun. As far as the wrecks go, they should be more frequent, or they should be more valuable. 
probably both. Because right now they're so infrequent that if I find one, another group on the server has none to find. Because there's probably only one at one time, as far as I can tell. Star Citizen is ultimately about having fun, and the event is really fun. Finding the medical supplies is really fun. But the problem with it is that you need to still feel like you're being rewarded for the gameplay. I think this is a really basic gameplay mechanic of MMOs, and Star Citizen really needs to improve this aspect of their gameplay and of their events. Honestly, this has been a really big issue with Star Citizen for a long time, going back to Jumptown. There was a time where you could buy certain items for a super high value and then sell them for a lot of money, and it created a lot of fun gameplay around it. But then they killed that for the sake of keeping the economy healthy. But what's the point of keeping it healthy if nobody's having fun? Certainly there have to be limits on this, you don't want to break the economy always, but for these events, for this isolated time, it has to be in greater supply and demand. It has to be fun. It can't be difficult for you to participate if you don't want to do combat, which is the reality of the current situation. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any thoughts yourself, please feel free to leave them down below. Let's give CIG some good feedback so they can improve the event going forward. I'm really looking forward to Xenothreat, and I hope that is improved over the last time we've played. If you guys have enjoyed this video, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next one. What? Isn't that an NPC?